So if you are not worried about Joe Biden's electability, then you have not been paying attention because he's not electable. Like, I don't want to say that it's a foregone conclusion that he loses to Donald Trump in the likely event that he's the Democratic Party's nominee. But like, there has to be some sort of miracle that's out of his control that would lead to him winning. And miracle probably isn't the best word because when I say miracle, I mean something horrible happening like coronavirus really turning into a global pandemic and, you know, uh, leading to some type of global economic crash, you know, the economy going downhill, something like that would have to happen, which means that, you know, a lot of people would be hurt. So miracle isn't the right word. Like, I don't know what the right word is in this situation, but what I'm trying to say is that Joe Biden winning against Donald Trump is a really difficult thing to imagine, especially considering that Donald Trump is now emboldened, right? He survived the Russia Gate scandal. He wasn't impeached. He um, He's very popular among Republicans. He's an incumbent. So he's harder to beat now than he was in 2016. But in 2020, we have a weaker candidate going up against Donald Trump. So, I mean, a lot of us on the left have been saying this about Joe Biden. Brace for impact. There's an iceberg dead ahead. And Bernie was going to be the one that would take hold of the ship and steer it away from that iceberg. But with Joe Biden, it looks like we are headed for a collision course. Now, the mainstream media kept talking about electability, but now that it seems likely that Joe Biden is going to be the nominee, all of a sudden, they're realizing, what did we just do? At least Jake Tapper on CNN seems to realize we've maybe made a huge mistake in propping up Joe Biden. I'm getting real 2004 vibes tonight, which is Democrats want to defeat an incumbent Republican so badly, Democratic voters, I mean, that they decide which one is electable and they decide which one is electable and they decide, okay, it's John Kerry, or in this case, it's Joe Biden. There's a huge coalescing around that person. They want to end the primary process as soon as possible. Uh, and then basically they coronate this person. Now, what did we learn uh, in the last few weeks? Uh, Mark McKinnon, former G George W. Bush advisor, uh, told me that actually they feared Howard Dean more. Mm -hmm. Because Howard Dean, even though he was less predictable, there was a, a st starker difference between Howard Dean and George W. Bush. And uh, he was drawing much bigger crowds than John Kerry was able to. And Howard Dean, we had him on the, on the Sunday show, and Howard Dean said, now you tell me. Um, <laughs> but, but the point is that when you have the Democratic electorate deciding that they are all a bunch of Rachel Maddows and Chris Hayes and the like, that they're just, you know, progressive pundits and they're going to pick out who is the best one, maybe they don't necessarily so always know what they're doing. So I found that really, really interesting. And my first thought was, where were you like months ago when we needed you to say this on national TV. Like, <laughs> it doesn't help that the media kept on like reinforcing this narrative that Joe Biden's electable, Joe Biden's the most electable, Joe Biden's the most electable, you know, vote for Joe Biden to be Donald Trump. Like, this is all you talked about. And you brought people on to your network who screeched about how Bernie Sanders wasn't electable. And this comes after you did the same thing in 2016. Like, we were told time and again, we had to fall in line and support Hillary Clinton because she was more electable against the Republican and she lost. And you didn't even take a moment to reflect on the mistakes that you made in this industry, mainstream corporate media, and you did it again. And now that Joe Biden is almost going to wrap up the nomination, now... You're saying maybe voters aren't the best to gauge a candidate's electability. I mean, you, sh you should have said this earlier, Jake. You should have said this earlier. Because now it may be too late. Come on. You're killing me. <laughs> and when he said that he's getting 2004 vibes, that actually really did resonate with me because I kind of see that too. Like, I see Joe Biden as a John Kerry type of figure where... You have the Democratic Party's base just horrified with the prospect of another four years of the Republican incumbent. So they just fall in line and support the individual with no enthusiasm, no energy behind him because they think that's the individual who's going to beat the uh, Republican. 
And that's kind of what we see happening now. They're coalescing around Joe Biden because they just want to defeat Donald Trump. But the problem is that, you know, as Michael Moore put it, when Democrats play it safe, Democrats lose. Now, for all this talk of George McGovern back in 1972 and how he was a far leftist and, you know, he got wiped out. What they never tell you is that public opinion polls showed that McGovern never had a chance against Nixon. Like, it wasn't as if he was leading in the polls and then it was a surprise victory. Nobody was surprised that he lost the general election. But the thing that's mo most important and to keep in mind is that that was 50 years ago. You don't have to go back that long to figure out what can happen now. You just have to go back to 2004. 2000. 2016. Like, the fact that we keep pushing this electability myth about moderates shows that these pundits, they're not able to adapt with changes. Like, that's part of being a political analyst. Like, you always are supposed to take into account new information. It's what I try to do. I always try to be introspective and figure out what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. But for them, it's like they're stuck in the 1990s or 1980s, and they are incapable of thinking outside of this dichotomy between winning over right-leaning independents and, you know, Republican voters outright. Like, that's all that they think you do to win. But things have changed. Now, the Democratic Party's key to success is to make sure that they have an energized base. Turnout is high, which means you're going to have to get young people involved who overwhelmingly support the Democratic Party over the Republican Party, which means that if you want young people to get involved, you've got to run someone who's progressive, not someone who's basically admitting that he's conservative and he likes Republicans and he'd veto Medicare for all. Like, it's a recipe for disaster. It is a recipe for disaster, and barring some type of huge external factor, like a global recession, it just seems really unlikely that Joe Biden can pull off a victory, given what we know about the modern uh, American electorate. The issue that Democrats need to face is not winning over, you know, suburban never Trump Republican voters. It's getting people to vote in the first place. So this means that they should be doing a continuous get out the vote effort, registering thousands of new voters every single month, because this is what is needed. Because if they don't get back power, they can't beat back voter suppression efforts. But the problem is that they're suppressing their own base because they know that larger turnout ends up helping Bernie Sanders and progressive insurgent ca campaigns. So it's just like, they, they just don't get it. And I don't know if they're just genuinely stupid or they're being intentionally obtuse. But if you want to win, you have to adapt with new information. You can't keep just using the same playbook. You know, the same rules don't apply today. Throw out the old rule book. This is 2020. Things have changed. This isn't 1972. This is 2020. And if you want to win, you've got to change. You've got to adapt. Two new generations of voters are now eligible to vote. Millennials are the largest, young voters, just generally speaking, are the largest um, percentage of the population now. We overpassed boomers, right? So you've got to figure out some way to bring them in. I don't know if it's compulsory voting. I don't know if it is really just doing these types of continuous get out the vote campaign efforts, but you've got to try everything because you can't afford not to. We're facing, you know, climate catastrophe and fascism in this country. So, I mean, that's all I'll say. You know, these pundits in mainstream media, they've got to change. But, you know, part of the reason why they won't change is because they're there because they won't actually, you know, um, offend the status quo, right? You're not going to get hired at CNN or MSNBC if you are going to be a rabble rouser and disrupt the interests of corporate America and capitalism. So um, since that won't change, then we'll continue to be stuck in this predicament where we run these corporate Democrats because we're promised that they're the most electable and then they go on to lose and we're stuck with a horrible Republican. It's sad, but I just, I don't know that they'll wake up and maybe they never will but we've got to make sure that our MSNBC-brained family members stop watching 
CNN and MSNBC and corporate media and actually try to find outside sources that don't just confirm their bias, but actually teach them new things about the electorate and give them an alternative perspective that they're not getting from MSNBC.